Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about eddy current separators or ECS. So let's dive deep into it. So what exactly is the problem? Well, problem is that our solid waste stream, be it municipal level, be it national level or whatever have you, it has a mix of things. It just does not have solid waste. There is like things into it. So it could have plastic, it could have metal mix, not just one metal, many metals, and it could even have glass. So that creates an issue. Now, thankfully, metal is very easily recyclable, uh, but it should not be too corroded. Now, this is one common misconception people have is like aluminum is recyclable. Yes, and not that much. That's why you will always hear like, you know, 80% of it gets recycled. Why is not 100%? If it's oxidized, then the recycling plant will just remove it. So that aluminum oxide would be just like yeet. So you lose that amount of, um, you know, uh, metal. So you have to be mindful if something is too rusted, especially thin metals, people generally don't try to recycle it simply for that reason. If they send it to a furnace, furnace will have a, like a stage where they remove the impurities, everything will be gone. So it should not be too oxidized. But there is a benefit, like if we go through this process of with steel, with any metal, aluminum, copper, whatever have you, it has no degradation, meaning once you reach into a uh, molten metal state and if the things are done properly, it can be forged into new stuff perfectly, meaning there is no degradation. It's not like plastic where you have virgin plastic and non-virgin plastic. It's metal, it is metal, the end. There is no like, oh, the crystal structures have been de degraded or all that. Unless you are contaminating it with some problem, you know, something else or you want to change the metal alloy to something else, there will not be any degradation. Metal can be recycled as many times as you want. And practically speaking, even the oxidized part can be recycled. Heck, it's actually cost effective for some metals because if let's say land has soil, Soil has some iron in it to it. We spend millions of dollars mining that puppy. Imagine how much iron is there in rust. A lot more. So we can recycle it as long as you have more power. As in the cost of electricity, if it's low enough, it can be done today also. Engineering is there, science is sorted. All of those puppies are not an issue. It's just the cost-wise, it not, does not make sense. So that's why we lose it. But I can see a future where we have a lot of solar, a lot of wind and surplus energy where we can just like, hey, recycle, uh, you know, uh, rust also. It can be done. And there will not be any penalty. Oh, it's lock oxidized. No. Once we go through the proper process, it's pure metal. Now, if effective separation is achieved, we can keep recycling infinitely, meaning uh, our consumption, the consumption that we have of humanity is huge. Now, is that a problem? On its own, no. We can consume as much as we want, as long as we can recycle it. If we do not recycle it, then we have a hassle. So we should not need this. Basically, our mix stuff, it's creating an issue. That's why we need separation, or at least separating metal, because metal is expensive enough where it makes cost-effective sense. Hopefully it's not too rusted, then it makes really good sense to do so. So that's the problem. You have a mix of stuff, metals are easily recyclable. How can we get to it? So our first line of defense, you must have studied this in school, is magnetic separator. So you have a conveyor belt and the roller is just a permanent magnet or it could even be an electromagnet. Uh, so we just that. Now we take stuff, whatever the stuff, car parts, electric parts, we take the quote unquote stuff, grind it into small pieces and then just pass it through the magnet or magnet passes over it, collects whatever it is uh, metallic and rejects whatever is not magnetic. So it's good for very um, varied amount of streams, for example, construction waste. Uh, so whenever you are demolishing buildings, buildings use a lot of rebar metal rods those rods are expensive so you can uh, collect them and because they are completely enclosed most of them they are not rusted that badly so you can get a lot of valuable metal out of construction waste using this iron and steel car junkyard car has a lot of stuff for example you could have steel it could have uh, other things also like uh, rubber plastic uh, glass all of that but you can separate them out using magnets so that e-waste e-waste is not particularly rich in iron based stuff but it has enough of it where it justifies it uh, screws specifically most of the screws are uh, magnetic so it can be uh, recuperated so it does make sense however even though this puppy works on magnet, it does not see things like copper, aluminum, nickel, uh, non-forest metal is just like, I do not know what they are. So that's an issue. It does work. This is first line of defense. It does work. It's a good system. We got here so far because of this puppy, but we need something better, something that can uh, eat copper basically. So 
we introduced eddy current separator. Now this puppy has a drum and an even faster spinning drum inside it. So magnetic drum that induces eddy current. How do you introduce eddy current into something, any conductor? You have rapidly switching magnetic field. How do you achieve rapid uh, rapidly switching magnetic fields? Uh, you can have AC. Uh, that is like you know 60 hertz normal line AC but that's not fast enough or you can have a drum that has permanent magnet multiple poles of permanent magnet and you spin that puppy fast how fast your conveyor belt uh, the main drum could be like as high as like let's say 500 uh, rpm but the uh, inducing drum could be as high as 800 to 1500 rpm and with a lot of poles so you it introduces lot of magnetic field changing changing magnetic field into stuff so it literally induces its own electric energy into the conductors. Conductors starts to create it and then it fights it. Law of nature fights it. So when it fights it, it gets repelled because here's the deal. This is not gonna be moved. It's like too strong. But your small parts, it's like energy cannot be created or not to try. You dumped energy into it, motion and energy. What the heck is gonna happen? It's like, I'm gonna resist it. It's like, okay. So small parts gets yeeted out. You can see that, like you have package waste. Now what happens to can? Can is just yeeting out of there. Like aluminum can, be mindful. Aluminum can is just like yeet, yeet. Uh, you can do that. Like you can even uh, send copper wires there and it will be just yeeting out of them. And plastic and paper and all that, that will go into something else. So this is the critical aspect of it. You must introduce eddy current into the stuff and that eddy current itself will repel it. And uh, from an engineering point of view, that's the principle. What do we do engineer around? We just have a uh, basically conveyor belt that throws metal parts, conductor parts much further. For example, in this system, uh, you let's say they're gonna say, hey, if you have plastic, paper and all that just, it's gonna go around one feet. Uh, but what about conductors? Conductor will be thrown outside of one fit. So you put a separator blade there, the blade, and voila, now you have a separate, uh, you know, uh, separate metal system, separate, uh, you know, non-metallic system. Now it's far more effective because it works with copper, it works with aluminum, uh, those sort of puppy. So it's a really useful way of separating conductive metals out of non-conductive metals. It does work. And uh, it's been very prevalent in recycling industry from 1980s. And uh, because of the modern advancement in super duper hyper powerful magnets, this puppy, it's uh, now very powerful. Back in the days, it was not very powerful because again, we did. If you use electromagnet, the cost was not justifiable. If now permanent magnet, iron magnets were not that powerful. But new denium magnets, now you can have a lot of poles. So you do not even need to spin it that fast. And if you have a hall back array, you can achieve some serious, uh, you know, a magnetic flux density where even with low RPM, you could be like eating things out of there. So it does work. So basically it's completely opposite of normal magnetic system. Magnetic is like, hey, it will be opposite. The plastic will be going here. Ma magnetic will be, you know, curling uh, towards the barrel and going downwards. It's like, no, we eat metal out of there. So it works. It's been in use in the industry from 1980s. Yeah, I do feel stupid that I did not knew this, but uh, it's a very well-established technology. Heck, even in India, there are many manufacturers that use this and make this. So almost every country has this. This is a known tested technology. The only difference would be like, where is the angle? Some have adaptive system where the angle changes based on the particle size. They would have a sensor which you, just to optimize it basically. So this is the eddy current separator. Now let's be realistic, there are certain limits to this puppy. It's not a perfect, you have to understand, even a best electromagnet is not perfect. You're never gonna have perfection where it's like, you know, 100 uh, parts of metal would be separated from 100 parts of uh, non-metal. Uh, it, it's not gonna happen. So many times, uh, many management strategies are utilized. For example, re it. For example, if you are designing in such a way that metals are less likely to be thrown out, but you will uh, never throw non-metallic into the metallic bin, you will rerun it. Basically, you will run it two or three times. So again, depending on your uh, plan, what the heck you're gonna do after you have separated it. Many times people run it that way, where it's like, you know, the metal part should be super duper metal rich, but the consequence would be the waste will not be separated perfectly. So you may need to rerun it to get a maximum yield. But again, the more you rerun, the more energy you spend. So there is a balance. Generally, uh, two cycle is done maximum. Uh, so that's the, management you you do have to think about it second what if uh, the parts uh, supplier basically they're like uh, i'm gonna take this stuff and i'm gonna grind this puppy uh, if you grind it too small uh, basically chop it up into two small parts it will not work action equals reaction and uh, for that reason you need uh, basically stuff 
being there that is getting affected by the magnetic field. If the stuff that is getting affected by magnetic field is too small, it will not have enough oomph to fight and it will throw, like literally it will not have enough trajectory to be separated alone. So very small pieces do not work. So if you are like, what if I turn it into like very, very small things? Yeah, it's not going to work. It's a counterintuitive, but for eddy currents, it does need to have some oomph, some space. That's why like uh, if you throw a, you need to throw a big magnet on a big metal plate to get that eddy current effect. So same thing, if you grind things down too small, it will backfire on you. And uh, iron still does not work. Iron is like, it does not have, it's not a very awesome conductor, so it does not have very awesome resistive ability, so it backfires. Here it cannot be used. That's why we still use magnetic separator. So generally you will have magnetic separator separating the magnet, easily magnetized systems, for example, iron and steel. And then you're going to have an eddy current system that's going to try to get uh, aluminum and copper, nickel to some extent. Uh, but even that cannot touch stainless steel. Stainless steel is brutally naughty. It's like, no, you cannot separate me. Stainless steel is like brutal. Uh, so that does not work. So iron will also not work. Stainless steel will also not work. Uh, other metals are there, but majority of our waste do not have them. So that's not that big of an issue. Like lead will not work that effectively. Thankfully, uh, lead is recycled very effectively. We have a completely parallel, non-mixed ecosystem. So we do not have to worry about it. Another is insulated wires. For example, you have enamel wire. You're like, hey, what if I just chop uh, the, like, you know, we have a motor, we just chop it and just send it there. Yeah, it's not going to work. Insulated wires uh, do not work that well. And coated metals. So if you have a metal that has very good uh, dielectric uh, stuff around it, yeah, it's not going to work that effectively. So you still have to be mindful. That's why like it does require some management. You cannot just be like, I'm going to throw stuff through here. It's going to be sorted. Everything's going to be fine. I'm going to save the planet. That's not how it works. You have to plan it and you have to be reasonable with it. Even the best system, even with reruns, you're only expecting like 90-ish percent efficiency. Do not expect like 100%. So, and be mindful, transformer cores are the worst because again, we specifically designed them to not work. They are designed to fight against eddy current. So they are the worst thing. Even though it's a huge thing, it's like, no, I will fight. I will fight to the last breath. So you have to be a bit reasonable with things. So that's why we still have multiple stages where you, and God help you, if it's a, a transformer core that is made out of stainless steel, I do not think nobody, anybody has done that. I really hope not because then it has to be manually salvaged. Otherwise, there is nothing else can be done. So there are some limits. You have to be reasonable with this. Same with magnetics also. Uh, you have to be reasonable with your expectation when you are separating them. Now, let's uh, take a grander look with the recycling puppy. We have this problem where we are thinking if you make the better tool, it's going to solve our problem. Right now, why Europe does not recycle uh, most of their stuff, even though they have the technology and the plants and they, you go there, you see that like it's working, then how the heck India ends up getting magically all the e-waste of Europe? How the heck Pakistan gets it? How the heck, uh, you know, South Africa gets it? It's simply because it's too expensive. Why it's expensive? Human, they need human. In most systems, they need human. And many times when you see videos where like completely filtered garbage is coming in, there is a good chance some municipality already did the work. So it's not that there is every single recycling plant has human filtering things out, but it's a very large portion of it. So that's the issue. Basically, waste separation before mixing is the key. You want to have a nation that is completely, uh, you know, uh, efficient with recycling without costing too much environmental waste or uh, too much penalty, indirect penalties, where it's like, oh, we recycle, but uh, all it means is like you send your garbage to some, uh, uh, you know, other nation. If you want true recycling, you have to make sure you do not mix it. If it's mixed, God help you. If it's not mixed, it's child's play to separate it out. So all the tools like magnetic separators and eddy current separators, those are last line of defense. Meaning, imagine it this way, your stream is 80% there. 80%. Then you want to separate it out, it's awesome. It's cost effective. It's like uh, you have a river water that you are trying to filter through a normal filter. It's good. It's effective. It's going to work. You do not dump a sewage water into your filter. Filter is like overwhelmed. So same thing. We have to think in that way where it's like all our magical tools, recycling tools should be the you know, last line of defense, should not be the first thing. So how do we solve the problem? Well, first action plan, like what the heck do we do is deconstruction. This has to be the critical aspect. For example, you take 100,000 hard drive. We have more than that annually, small places. So you take 1, uh, 100,000 hard drive. Now here's the deal. You take that hard drive. What do we do right now? Now here's the deal. 
you can calculate how much money you're going to make out of it. The answer is surprisingly little. That's why we don't do it. Let's just yeet it out of there in e-waste piles. But imagine it this way. You either built a tool or you had some workers whose sole job was they had the hard drive. Before they trrr it, they just deconstruct it. Meaning they open it up, remove the platter, remove everything they can easily remove, not too much. Everything they can easily remove, they just remove it. Screws goes into a bin, the platter goes into another bin, uh, and you have magnets going into another bins, uh, actuator arms going into different bin. You just separated it. You did nothing complicated, nothing fancy, no chemistry, nothing. You just you do that same amount of hard drive, same amount of material. Now you go to recyclers, you're gonna be printing money. So this is the critical aspect, deconstruction is the key. Meaning, if you do not mix the platter with other broken things, its platter has enough magnetic content to be worth recycling. If you have the uh, permanent magnets come up, yeah, this magnets, if you just separate them effectively, recyclers will be like, shut up, take money, that's profitable. But once you drrr it, it's done. We should not go drrr it. That's, that's the worst thing we humans do. So basically, we genuinely have to take this. Right now, we are trying to do techno uh, solutions to basic problem. It's like, dude, if we separate our stuff out from day one, problem solved. Like, that's what we have to do as humans. Like, we really have to uh, properly get into the habit of this. And it has to become a social change where we, we, we should not need people to do this. Like, they should be like a last line of defense. There is some individual looking like, you know, just some uh, dead body does not, which happened. I'm not joking. It happened. Uh, so for that, so it's like edge cases, it should not be like there are people whose sole job is like day in and day out. It's like they're sorting garbages. That should not happen. So we have to make sure like deconstruction, even with mobile phones, like why we do not recycle mobile because it's mixed. Like you take a smartphone, separate out of the battery. Now the batteries have some value to be recycled. You take the mobile phone, you separate the LCD, you separate the speakers. Speakers have a lot of metal content and magnetic content. It's actually val valuable to recycle it as long as you do not mix it with plastic and PCB material. The more you separate it out, the more valuable it becomes. And it's not expensive to do. We just have to think about it. Like for example, there is pure silver used in uh, solar panel. In the last video, I also talked about it, where it's like, why don't, then why don't we recycle it? If pure silver price is X, you must recover that silver for here. Only then you can justify selling it. So if it's X, you must be able to, uh, you know, salvage pure silver at, uh, let's say, X minus 50%. Ideal scenario. X minus 30%, okay. X minus 20% is worthless because it's like, dude, you are not making any profit. All the machines and tools and all that is not working. But if you have deconstruction machine, it's a simple panel, goes there, you heat it up to 200 degrees Celsius. Now you crack the glass, trrr, glass, remove it. Now the glass is easily recycled because it's not contaminated too much. All it has is some glue, some silicon, some silver, not too much contaminated. It's recyclable. Glass manufacturers are like, we can use it. Then you take it another part, then you have a grinder roll that grinds away. Then it has some dust, some glue some silver now you're like huh this is the dust that has silver it has enough content to justify it it's not contaminated with everything else silicon again take the same silicon to recycling plant where it's like oh this silicon is not contaminated with everything under the sun it's actually useful so we have to th rethink in this terminology so our first priority must be to stop mixing. Everything that we do before mixing allows us to actually get our job done. Everything after mixing is like just a banded on a solution, which is not gonna, which is not effective. It should be our last line, not the first line. So this was my presentation on eddy current separator. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please hit the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't really enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me your disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.